All right, so today I'm going to show you guys how to make a chain in 3D Studio Max. Let's get to it. All right, so in order to make a chain in 3D Studio Max or any sort of like dynamic rigid body connecting thing, a chain, whatever, I'm going to be using Mass Effects, a 3D Studio Max rigid body simulator type thing. It can make cloth, it can do hard objects, stuff like that. It's not super complicated. It can't do like amazing stuff, but for simple things like a chain, it's kind of perfect. So in order to get to Mass Effects, like, you know, it's going to be lost up here in the menus and whatever, but the easiest way is to just come up here into the open part of the toolbar or any open part. You can right click and then there should be a Mass Effects toolbar. This is going to pop up right here and you can just add it to the top and then here are your options. So what these are essentially is you can open up this menu and it's got a lot of complicated stuff. Uh, you know, you can do gravity controls in here, get into sub steps and all this stuff, but we're just going to close this right now and we're not going to worry about that. What we're going to do is we're going to quickly make a chain. So let's go ahead and make a couple of links right now. So the fastest way to make a chain for these purposes will be to come over to here and we're going to go to create and then the second tab over is shapes. Now under shapes you just have basic shapes, right? So I'm going to grab the rectangle and then I'm going to make it like right up here. Yeah. So whenever you drag the object out, you can just come over to modify. This will give you parameters on your object and with inside with and inside here, you can round these up, you know, 90 by 180 if you just want some numbers. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to round these corners off and we're going to do it on the spline. So we're going to right click anywhere on the object, convert to spline. We're going to go to rendering, enable in renderer, enable in viewport. This is going to give depth to our spline. So now we're going to pump up the thickness a whole bunch right here and then we're going to turn the sides down to four like that and now you can see we have this kind of object and then we can just rotate this 45 degrees and you know there we go so that's one way to do it uh, additionally if you want to come down here into vertex and round these guys off you can grab all four of them like this and then come down in vertex to fillet and then just round them off like that. So a little quick modeling lesson for you. And then I would grab these on the end, jack up your weld and then weld and weld and it give you a nice clean mesh. So that's about as detailed as you may want. Uh, truthfully, the simpler the model is, when you're simulating things like a chain, the faster it's going to simulate, the more stable it's going to be. So you want to aim for the least amount of polygons possible. So I'm going to leave this at four and, you know, we're just going to leave this just like it is, right? If you need this to be rounded off, uh, the quick way to do it is just to throw a turbo smooth on here, right? And then if you need it to be thicker, you can put a push on here and then you can like pump it up right and do all kinds of stuff so we're not going to worry about that we know what we can do with this shape already so i'm just going to start right here so the cool thing is you can just instance this this effect right so you can grab this one and now we're going to start applying our mass effects stuff to it so underneath this ball right here you can click and hold and it will give you more options set as dynamic rigid body, set as selected kinematic rigid body, set selected as static rigid body. So for this first link, I'm going to have it not move. I'm just going to have it hold in place as is. So while stuff will be able to interact with it, it's not going to move at all. And I'm going to have the rest of the chain just kind of dangle around and I'm going to move this one around to kind of show you how the chain controls. So in order to be able to have it be a rigid body and for me to be able to move it, it needs to be a kinematic rigid body. And that just means you can move it around willy nilly. Some nodes are not geometry nodes. Now, what that means is 
that this right here isn't technically geo, it's still a spline. So what I'm gonna have to do is convert to editable mesh. Now, actually, let's do poly. Oh, I like poly better. So now, we have this guy and we come down, set selected as kinemagic rigid, rigid body, bam. So it applied this sort of hole to it. You can see right here, these lines are showing you uh, what it's creating behind the scenes that this thing's gonna interact with. And you can already see that it's not correct, like this hole isn't punched out properly. In order to fix that, you have to come down into the Mass Effects Rigid Body menu, and we're gonna go to Physical Shapes right here. And then down a few steps, you're gonna get Shape Type. Now this is a convex shape, and we need to, sh we need to change it to Concave right here. But that's not all, because you also have to come down here uh, and generate a hull out of this shape. So you can hit generate right here and you can see that it's still not very good at all. Like it's just not filling at that hole. And if you hit improved fitting and then hit generate, it gets a little bit better, right? And of course you can come up into mesh detail, you know, 100, improved fitting, hit generate, and you know, it gets a little bit better. You can just get in here and play with it until it's what it needs to be. But what this means is this will work. This will totally work. So we have our first shape set up and here it goes. So what we have to do now is grab this guy and we're gonna hold shift and then click on the X axis and move him over, making a duplicate. We're gonna have this be a copy because these are gonna be different. Click rotate, turn your angle snap on, rotate this guy to the side and we're making our chain. But what we gotta do now is come up into here and change this type. Now we put a kinematic uh, rigid body type on this. We want all the subsequent chains to be a dynamic rigid body, which means they're just gonna bounce around and do whatever and be driven by other objects. So just to do all that again one more time to make sure you got everything, we can take this guy and then hold shift, move it over to make a copy. We're going to make it an instance. We're going to turn on rotation, turn on our rotational snaps, move it all the way up to 90 degrees for vertical. It's all looking really, really good. And let's just reapply this guy one more time and make sure we got it 100% right. We're gonna delete this. We're gonna go up here. We're gonna go to set to dynamic rigid body. This is the one that just bounces around and does whatever. It's gonna be driven by our kinematic rigid body, which is right over here. So put it on here, change from convex to concave, improved fitting, Generate, cool, made us our shape, come over to this one, and since that one's an instance, it's gonna follow that. So right now, we can just grab these two, copy them down just like this, and then makes, let's make like 30 copies. That's gonna give us a pretty good chain. So now that we have this all figured out, we can get to simulation. And that's where we click on this guy. Now, the first option you're going to see is use ground collisions, and it lets you kind of fudge the ground height. The ground is anything below this black line, anything below this black line right here on the grid. This chain's going to drop down. It's going to treat that like the ground. It's going to hit it and just bounce around like any other floor. And of course, up here you can set your gravity. You know what direction it needs to go. You can actually create a gravity a force object, which can be found under, I believe, space warps, and there's a gravity force object. You can drag this guy out. You know, you can set the direction of the gravity, and then you can pick it, like right here with a pick gravity. We're not going to be doing that. We're just gonna be using directional because Z down, it's totally fine. Solver stuff, we're gonna start small. Something like that. Uh, I'll get into explaining this a little bit more when we get going, but essentially this is for a more complicated chain movement, for a longer chain, lots of pieces, lots of intersection. Uh, sometimes the chain tends to go crazy. It can do a lot of weird stuff. Uh, this helps smooth a lot of that out by like interpolating the frames as like really far apart. It's a whole thing. But essentially is if your chain just starts to go crazy on you, throw these numbers up a little bit more and a little bit more and magically the chain will start working better. It's it's one of those things. Got three options down here, don't mean a whole lot. Some advanced settings, we're not gonna get into a whole lot of that. What we're gonna do right now is we're going to test it. So the first thing you should probably worry about truthfully is, is this gonna blow up? 
So you just select everything and then you hit bake all and see what it does. Cool. We got a chain. So that was it. <laughs> That's how you make a chain. So a couple of things to keep in mind is you can scrub the play bar after uh, it simulates. If you want to redo parts of this object, you can come to the middle abouts, grab a few, and if you hit unbake selected, it will only unbake clearly what you selected. Everything else stays the same. So again, in the chain world, if you just needed to remove links off the end, you wouldn't have to resim the whole thing. You could just hide them. But again, you remove too many. It changes the way the whole chain works. It's a whole thing. So we're going to unbake all and unbake selected. And here we go. So right now, uh, let's show what this kinematic thing does. So let's take this guy and first, chain and then make a keyframe and then let's go a little crazy with it let's throw it up here and then over here and then here and then here and then here so it's just going to kind of go crazy and again for the sake of science turn that off and we're going to bake all cool Sweet, so a couple other things, uh, now that we know that that works and that works. So interestingly enough, what you can do is you can actually put one of these at each end and control the chain in the middle. Again, if you were to take this object and link it to another object that's moving around, it'll inherit all that object's motion. Uh, that's really good if you can like do a 3D track on something, you need to add a chain to it, stuff like that. <laughs> You can see that it's kind of floaty, like even though this is moving, if I play it back in real time, well, it's not super floaty, but say you want it to be heavier, right? Like you want to simulate like a heavier chain. Uh, there's a couple of things you can do. Inside here, they actually have mesh uh, presets. So you can come into here, come into a preset, you can be like, I want this to be steel, right? And luckily, since we have this instanced all the way down, every single one of these will be treated as steel. Now, I mean, that's a real subjective thing like steel what does these what do these pink polygons know about being steel in relation to anything else you know it's 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 all just kind of you eyeballing it truthfully but then you can come down here and see what steel does you know now that you have it on hit bake see what happens and truthfully doesn't look like a whole lot changed <laughs> so I mean, that's where it kind of gets into subjective land. If you want to turn the gravity up weirdly, I mean, it seems like if you go negative in the numbers, like 5,000, uh, the gravity, the stuff will fall faster. So let's see what that does. Yeah, so it'll make stuff fall faster and kind of lay flatter on the ground a little bit more. That's sort of a global parameter though as well. So it's, you know, it's sort of a use at your own risk. How big is your simulation? What do you, you know, what else is this thing going to interact with? You know, it, it's, it's a lot of questions you have to ask yourself on your end, what you're going to use it for. But yeah, anyway, it's a cool little thing. Uh, it's really neat. If your chain just explodes and does all kinds of stuff, keep throwing these numbers up. I have had simulations that were so big and complex, I actually had to take these numbers to their absolute maximum, which is 159 and 255. And y like, it'll take longer for this thing to simulate, but sometimes stuff just gets crazy. Projects get really, really big. There's a lot going on. The chain is really, really long. It's moving really, really quickly. Moving quickly is the big killer. Like that's what really hurts because if the chain is moving really quickly, these numbers have to be really, really high in order for it to interpolate the frames because so much happens between one frame and the next and it gets kind of complicated. This is all layman's turns, of course, like, you know. And as far as last steps go, we can just grab every one of these guys. We come up to here, we put on a turbo smooth to round them off, and then put on a push to beef them up. Cool, now it looks like a chain. And all the animation comes over, and you have a perfectly fine chain. <laughs> and it comes down like, 
expecting some kind of slow-mo Zack Snyder nonsense shot like that. Hollywood's full of guitar solos and like heavy metal bullshit going on in the back. So it's like Mad Max's worst nightmare with like the chainsaw fights and nonsense go pish. Heavy metal strobe lights going on in the background. And it all starts with a chain. You know, or whatever. Just use your imagination. Alright guys, bye.